Hello and welcome back to Sheaf Math. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the Pythagorean Theorem. And we're also going to learn how to find missing sides on a right triangle. So what exactly is the Pythagorean Theorem? Well, it is a rule of math that was discovered, or at least attributed to, the ancient mathematician Pythagoras a couple thousand years ago, or more than that. Um, and what it states, and this is a very mathematical definition, but in a right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. And I know that's a lot to uh, kind of comprehend right now, so I'm going to show you visually what that looks like. So we start with a right triangle. This only works with right triangles. And uh, um, what we're going to do is we're going to label uh, the three sides, A, B, and C. And I did this uh, purposefully. Um, the A and B are the uh, the small sides, the legs, and the C, which is across from that 90 degree angle, this is called the hypotenuse. Okay, and it's very important that you uh, recognize which one is the hypotenuse and which one are the, the other two legs. Now, it doesn't matter which one, which leg you put A and B on. That doesn't matter, but the hypotenuse is always going to be C. So here is the actual Pythagorean theorem. And what it states is that if you square side A and square side B and add them together, that it will always equal the square of the hypotenuse C. And it works on every single right triangle. It's really an amazing discovery and can help in so many different ways. Now let me show you how this works with a real triangle. So here I have a very cool triangle. In fact, this triangle is so cool it even has its own name and it's called the 345 triangle. I and mean, we're going to talk a little bit in a little bit why this is so cool. Um, anyway, what we have is our two sides, three and four, and our hypotenuse, which is opposite that 90 degree angle which is 5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my 3, 4, and 5 into the, the theorem. And so 3 and 4 are my A and B. Again, it doesn't matter which one is which on that one. But the 5 is definitely the C. And so I am going to simplify and, and we get 9 plus 16 equals 25. And sure enough, 25 does equal 25. Okay, and so this is an example of a true right triangle and you can see that how that works. Now let me show you how we solve for a missing side. Now I'm going to give you another very special triangle and we'll talk about this in a second I promise but um, we're missing the hypotenuse right? Um, that, that large side that's opposite that 90 degree angle. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put 5 and 12 in for the A and B like this. And we're going to simplify and we're going to solve for C. Now I know it's a question mark there, but we're just going to use C for right now because that's uh, what we always use. And so 25 plus 144 equals C squared. And we get 169 equals C squared. Now, if you're not sure how to undo a square, um, we, we need to solve for C, not C squared. So the way to undo a square is that you square root both sides. And so I'm going to square root both sides of the equation. And 169 actually is a perfect square that comes out to 13. And so we get C equals 13. Now, I have to admit that the two triangles that I just used are very rare exceptions in the right triangle world. And we call these triangles Pythagorean triples. Uh, it's because they are some of the rarest triangles that have all three sides, I'm sorry, right triangles that have all three sides that are whole numbers. It's very rare to find one. In fact, the 345 uh, is so common that it has a, it's named the 345 triangle. And so the 5, 12, 13 triangle is the next one um, that we know of. And uh, they're, just, they're just very rare. And so I'm going to show you the reality of what your answers are going to look like. 
So here are the reality of the sides. So we have another triangle here, right triangle, and we have our two legs, but we are missing our hypotenuse. So we're going to put our 5 and 6 in for the A and B. We're going to simplify, and now we're going to solve for C. And so remember, to undo a C squared, we square root it. And so we do that, and we end up with C equals radical 61, or the square root of 61. Um, and this is not a perfect square. And so the reality is that your perfect answer, you know, the, the exact answer is the square root of 61. Now some teachers like you to put that into the calculator and um, and give an approximate answer, maybe round it, and so I did that and I got uh, C is approximately 7.81. I rounded it to the hundredth place. And if you look up at the triangle, you can see that 7.81 makes a lot more sense than square root 61. We just don't think about it in those terms. And so um, you, your teacher will tell you which way they want the answer, whether it's going to be in a radical form, simplest radical form, or um, approximate form. And that's the little approximate sign, the little squiggly equal sign. Now what if we're missing one of the small sides? So here's an example. We have 7 and then the question mark is the other leg and then the 15 is the hypotenuse. So now we're missing one of the sides. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put the numbers that we know of into the formula. So we'll put 7 in for A, B is unknown, and 15 for C. And so now we're going to simplify and solve for B. So we get 49 and then we subtract 49 on both sides, so we get b squared equals 176. And to solve for b, we square root both sides, and we end up with b equals the square root of 176. So that is our exact answer. If you want to approximate it, put it into the calculator, it comes out to about 13.27, rounded to the hundredth, and you can see that that looks like it makes sense as far as our sides. Okay, one last thing on how to write your answer. We talked about in the last question, if you got something like b equals radical 176, um, you can approximate it. It depends on your teacher. But there is another level of this that can be done. So once the square root of 176 is in its simplest form. And suppose that we had a, an answer like c equals square root of 18. Now this can actually be simplified a little bit more. If you're not familiar with this, I'm going to do one example of it, but if you're not familiar and you want a little bit more practice on it, there's another video on simplifying radical expressions. So um, the way this works is that um, you look at the number inside the square root, 18, and you think about are there any perfect squares, perfect square numbers, that are factors of 18. And I know you know all the perfect squares like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, all those. And so I can see that 9 is a factor of 18. And so I'm going to write it like this. And so you can see there's I've done nothing to change this. I've just written 18 as 9 times 2. And another rule that we can do is we can um, break this apart into square root 9 times square root 2. And when you multiply those two, it comes out to square root 18. So this is a um, an okay move for us. And so you can see now that the square root 9 actually can be simplified to 3. And so our final answer will be 3 square root 2. And so this is the, um, the way that you simplify um, a radical expression. And so again, there's another video on it that goes more in depth on it. But um, sometimes your teachers will be asking you to make sure you simplify it. Now, on the left-hand side, the 176, uh, that was not able to, we couldn't simplify that anymore. That was one and done. And there you have it. You learned the Pythagorean theorem, and you learned how to find some missing sides on right triangles. Well, I hope it helped. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.